three important things that stick out to me anyway, as far as criteria, if your intention is to have a serious relationship with a Filipina. Now, if all you're looking for is the one night stand and just playing around or having a girl for two, three months on, on that sort of agreement or whatever, then there's a whole other set of criteria and warnings to go with that. And I've covered that in, in other videos. And, and these are just the first three. There's some other things that I'll cover in another video. The first one that, that's gonna happen chronologically is gonna be the initial attraction. There's that whole thing of, well, sometimes you meet somebody, you get to know them, and they become attractive to you. I think that's more common among women, although it happens with men as well. But for us men, we're very visually oriented. And the first thing that grabs our attention with a woman is if we find her attractive. And so you want to you wanna stick with somebody that you find attractive, which is a different thing from picking the girl that everyone considers attractive. Because it's one thing if, if what you really, really have your heart set on is the quote unquote trophy wife or the model, the, you know, the girl that won the last Miss Behole pageant or whatever, that's all fine and good. Nothing wrong with that. But just be true to yourself. You know, you want a woman that you find attractive, not a woman that just every other guy is going to find attractive. You don't need everybody else's approval. Uh, you're the one that's going to live with her. You're the one that's going to marry her. The only important thing is that you find her attractive. You know, it's one thing to superficially see a girl in a crowd and, and like, wow, she's really pretty. She's got a really good figure. She's a really sharp dresser. Those are like the first impressions. But to me, one of the first criteria is I would want a woman who I find attractive. And that doesn't mean she has to be the prettiest girl on the island. It just means I find her attractive. I feel lucky to have her time. That, to me, is like one of the things that, that, that I think is like a, a must have. If you're gonna be in love with somebody the rest of your life, you want somebody that you find attractive. The second thing, and not second in importance, in fact, I would put this maybe even above the whole attraction thing, is trust. And by trust, I mean it in an all-encompassing way. Finding a woman, a Filipina, in, in the Philippines that you can trust. Now, the temptation that most guys fall into is that they get to the Philippines, they're so overwhelmed with how young and beautiful and bright and cheerful this girl is, right away they trust her, just on those merits alone. They trust her with their money, their bank account, and next thing you know, you know, they're gutted like a fish. And so trust is something that comes from taking time to get to know them over time, and you see where their character is at. Somebody, you look at their priorities, do they take care of their family? Are they on good terms with their family? A woman that is the black sheep of her family, who can't even get along with her own family, is somebody you really gotta, gotta think twice about. A woman who most of her friends are bar girls, you gotta think twice about. You want a woman that you can trust, and the reason you trust her is not because you're head over heels with how pretty she is or how sweet she is to you. Those should not be the reasons you trust her. The reason you trust her is because over a period of time, six months, nine months, year, whatever, in all the little things, you find that you can trust her with small amounts of money, you can trust her to be on time, you can trust her to do what she says she's gonna do, you can count on her. Because remember, you're kinda looking for a long-term relationship here, you're looking at marriage, you're looking at somebody who, when the both of you, or at least you, are older, this is someone you're gonna count on to help you get to the doctor and remind you about your medications and all that. You don't want some flaky party girl who's basically just gonna leave your medications and go hit the bar. Cause you're gonna, if you're gonna marry this woman, you're gonna end up trusting her to some degree with your future, you know, your your money, your time, your, your whole life really. At least that's the way I see it if you're gonna get married. Now, if you're not serious about marriage, don't even bother. You can just have plenty of girls left and right. Don't even worry about marriage. But if you're, if you're looking for a serious life partner, a woman that you can really count on, then I think integrity, trust, 
a woman who's not wasteful with money, a woman who's good with money, a woman who thinks of the future with you financially and can be trusted in, in just every way you can think of. She's faithful, she's loyal, she's, you know, she's focused on you, she's in love with you. So attraction and trust, spark and magic. And if it's not there, I don't care how pretty they are, even if they're a good girl, even if they could be trusted and all that, to me, if there's no what I call spark and magic, I don't see the point. I really don't. And it's not a fleeting thing. It's a personality thing. Your personality combined with her personality. When the two of you are together, you enjoy being together. And it doesn't rely upon going out and island hopping or going to resort or, or doing all that other stuff. That's all great. Anybody can have a good time doing the whole honeymoon scene. The spark and magic I'm talking about, it's almost instantaneous when you meet them. And, and as your personality and their personality begin to mesh and trust each other, you just enjoy being with them. You, you, you're, you're just stoked to hang out and whisper and goof off waiting in dental office or going grocery shopping, going just to do everyday normal things. It almost really doesn't matter what you're doing a simple picnic on the beach or whatever, you found somebody that your personality and theirs just what we call in the United States chemistry. It's easy to find that in the initial stage when you first meet. You can have great chemistry in the beginning. It's like my mom once said, they're all nice in the beginning. Everybody can go through that honeymoon phase at the beginning where you're on your best behavior and you're getting along great, blah, blah, blah. This is why I think it's so important I stress all the time, if you're looking for marriage, if you're going to get married in the Philippines, take three to six to nine months, a year even. Spend physically time with this person to let all this happen, this chemistry. I know people think it can happen online, but I'm telling you, you could be online for two years and you're still in the honeymoon phase. You really are. It's when you're spending time together doing the simple stuff, maybe even just a trip to the beach. You get everything ready, you get halfway there and it rains and you end up sitting in the car and having your picnic there. That's when you start finding out what kind of a person you're with. Can they make the best of it? Are they going to gripe and complain and expect you to like fix it? That doesn't happen online. And so I think that whole attraction, trust, you know, get, developing a sense of trust for the real reasons. And then that chemistry, that spark and magic. Those are things that happen in person. Now, it's all great if you want to meet them online and just consider the whole online thing an introduction. Even if it goes on for two years, it's really just an introduction. You really don't know that person online. You don't. When you get here and you're spending time with them, serious time with them, doing ordinary things, that's when you're really, in my opinion, that's when you're really starting the relationship. That's when you're really getting to know each other. Marriage is, is a relationship that you have in person, living together, sleeping in the same bed, eating the same food, planning the same future, investing the same money, having the same dreams and goals and hopes and aspirations together. It's two lives becoming one. And a relationship is the precursor to a marriage. So these are the first three things that I think stick out to me. It's very easy to get distracted with oh gee, this one's really sexy, this one's really cute, this one's really bubbly, uh, this one's a lot of fun. But to me, if you come back to these three things, do you find her attractive? Do, can you really trust her? And do you trust her because of good reason, uh, not just because you're infatuated with her? And is your chemistry there? Do you really have stuff to talk about? Do you really love to just hang out and just talk and just you know, talk about the future, talk about now, talk about the past, just talk, just enjoy each other. If you can hit those, all three of those things on all cylinders, then I think you got a really good candidate for a keeper. Uh, if one of those things is missing, my suggestion would be either foster it to see if you can bring it out in that person or think to yourself, you know, man, she's attract. I find her attractive and and we, you know, we get a kind of a pretty good chemistry, but I don't trust her. Well, I'd, I'd say really think twice about that. Go through these, this, this one, two, three checklist. And if you got all those things, I think you got a really good candidate.